Hello, welcome 20 somethings. Today it is Annabelle and I, which is usual, as long with along with Alyssa and Mason, who were actually hosts last year on 20 somethings. Big hello to them. Thank you for coming on to the show. Thank you. Hope you're both doing well. So let's just jump straight into it, okay? We're at home, we're in a difficult situation. And a lot of people, I mean, I know personally my grandfather would always do this, but it's mostly only in the older generation in situations like this where they look to the news to find out the information. Why do you think that our generation is not as news informed? I just want to say I feel slightly offended because as a poli sci major, I watch the news every day. So I'm part of the older generation. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. The outlier. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I don't know. So at least I asked my sister about this because she's 17 and doesn't watch the news. And she said, like, the real reason that she doesn't do it is because, like, half of it is fake nowadays and she can't filter it out. So whenever something happens, she'll just text me and be like, is this real? And I'll be like, yeah, or no. And she'll just be like, oh, okay. Um, so that's her reason, at least. I think yeah. for our generation, like, we just get all our information from social media you know, or we'll follow like news channels or like news companies and then they'll be like, oh, breaking news and we'll get a notification from them. And that's how we get our information. So we won't sit down and watch the news, but we'll read about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I feel like my friends, um, like a lot of people I know just get it from social media, which can be dangerous too, because I think it's a lot of like those viral tweets where it's just like Joe Schmo tweets something because they saw it from somewhere and they heard it from someone. It's like a game of telephone. So yeah, I think it's like mostly social media for people our age. With the social media though, there can be some of the issues with, as yesterday, for instance, I was at work and I got an alert from Twitter saying, Kim Jong-un is dead. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> interesting. So then the whole the rest of the day for my next four hours, I'm at work. I'm thinking, wow, Kim Jong-un's really dead. I guess we don't have a World War III coming. And I go home until after I actually look it up and find out reportedly dead. And now there's this whole situation. And the social media has kind of made this situation messy. Yeah. <laughs> it was like from an insider source in China because um she was like it was like this granddaughter of a minister in china who said that they sent health of like health um officials to like go um help kim jong-un but like we don't know if he's dead or not apparently he's in a coma from like other places we don't know no idea uh yeah it's a game of telephone <laughs> i think that social media is just an easier way like when somebody says something it can get out quick meanwhile so with the news, like they have time to like break it down and figure it out. But, you know, our, the younger generation, us, we, we want it now. So we'll look to whatever comes out first. Not to rag on social media, but exactly what you're saying where it gets out quick. And that, we're seeing that again in another issue where the fall semester coming up, I'm already seeing on social media people talking about it's not coming, we're not going to have a fall semester. Why is that popping up so early? And what do you guys think is going to happen with it? Well, so I know that, so Massachusetts canceled all like public schools like um until september and the whole thing was like they might cancel like fall semester for like high school and like elementary school and i know that bu was like oh we're not gonna have um fall semester and then they were like mm, jk maybe we will um but if fall semester goes online i don't think i could deal with it like i'm having a hard time right now in school and i just i don't think i could yeah it's really sad to think that it could be online i definitely wouldn't be for that um but yeah i agree like a lot of people seem to be like already talking about that and keep in mind like it's still April I know we need to like prepare and things like that but I think everybody really wants to jump on this right away because there's really no other news to talk about but corona <laughs> at the same time though a fall semester while I wouldn't like that because you know I have friends at school and I have a whole different life at school a whole different system I work with that I'd like to stick with it would be more than likely cost effective because you wouldn't have to pay for room and board and I'd hope that they lower tuition. I doubt they will because, you know, everyone's always out to get money and evil. But it could be cost effective, theoretically. Cost effective to not, oh, because you're going to be living at home and you'd have to pay, um, like, okay, okay. I see. Yeah, I, because you're taking online classes. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, like, I'm having a really hard time with, like, online classes because I have 
really, really bad anxiety. And like, so the reason is I need that like online account, like I need that accountability in class because I procrastinate everything. And I need to be like, to have somebody go, you need to do this homework assignment. And I'll be like, okay. And then I won't like break down in tears and like stress out that I'm doing this. Um, but with Corona right now, that's not happening. So my classes are like in the trash right now. So it's whatever, but that's fine. At least the good news is there is pass fail. So, you know, at the end of the day, if they are trash, I mean, I know one of mine might be at, the, at this point. You can just pretend it didn't happen. Yeah. Honestly, if the classes were to go online, I was already thinking about coming back this year and taking a couple online classes, but so I could still be working in the film and TV industry. Uh, it, it wouldn't bother me all that much, I guess. <laughs> That's a good point. I didn't think about that because um, one of the jobs I'm working for right now requires some travel. And if we are at the point that we can travel, I guess it would be kind of nice to be like taking online classes while like going around and doing things. But like, I doubt that we're going to be able to travel and I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I th think if fall classes are going to be canceled, I just don't think that we're going to be able to travel. Yeah. Yeah. At that point, things might be shut down still, which would be unfortunate. And touching upon what Annabelle uh, mentioned earlier, if things continue to be shut down all the way through, I don't know, September when school would start again, mental health would be a serious issue going on in the country that a lot of people aren't talking about, I believe, personally. But what are you guys' thoughts on how mental health would be taken care of during this whole quarantine situation? I mean, I know, like, so there's been a few cases of, like, suicide where people, like, haven't been able to deal with quarantine, um, and they just, like, have done it. And also, quarantine, in the sense, like, right now, might also be locking people with abusers and other things like that, because you literally can't leave your house. Um, for me, personally, it's, like, I'm struggling. I live in Arizona, so, like, we have a bunch of space around us, so I can still go outside and, like, bike. Um, I can't even imagine on the East Coast where you guys are, like, actually stuck in your houses, um, but not being able to see people and not being able to like keep up with things like is hard. So. I know yeah. for me, at least it's kind of been a troubling time since I, I don't have like things to go out and do. So I, I stay at home and I kind of, you know, get more depressed and anxiety. And I dealt, I've dealt with a lot of that in the past and it's, it's hard, but everyone's kind of has their own little niche, their own little thing. I mean, I did therapy for a little bit. Uh, I take CBD, uh, you know, trying to find different ways on what would aid me, you know, through this time right now. Yeah, I actually, I have a family member who is in law enforcement and he said that he's seeing a lot more overdoses right now. And that's because of like the, the break in routine is just like really hard for people who rely on that, who are recovering. So yeah, I think it's about like just trying to find a routine and things like this. Like this is making my day right now, seeing your faces and meeting new people, like just finding ways to connect with people online. Um, yeah, and just, I guess, just trying to stick to a routine or, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, like for the online like meeting people and everything like that. So I actually go to a therapist on a regular, like in school. Um, and I haven't been able to meet them recently, but I'm also on medication. So like the medication is like, being fine right now um because the whole thing about like medication and therapy is you can take both of them simultaneously and it'll like, help but like you can also substitute for them for each other but I know like therapy isn't for everybody but it really helps for me and I it's hard not being able to like contact people like I've had a few online sessions but it's really not the same because like I'm in my house well yeah. exactly just like that with the online sessions there could be people that I know a couple of friends of mine who have been looking into the possibility of therapy recently and now they before even having to get to go to a therapist they're going to be forced onto an online format and personally i'm not good at opening up to people at all so i can only imagine how much harder it would be for someone to open up to a therapist online for the first time without actually having a face-to-face -face conversation with them so at that point is the therapy even going to help these people or are they just have to ride this the wave until the end of the quarantine i think it's always good to to reach out to somebody like for me personally I've had a lot of like scares um 
and I just need to talk to people. And like, I have some friends that I reach out to, but I also don't, I'm not near any of my friends. And I, even if I was, I couldn't contact them. Um, so like I, but I also have a good relationship with my therapist. So like, um, even though it's online, I can just be like, Hey, um, or I can call them and be like, yo, what up? Um, for people just starting, I think it's good to reach out if you're at that point, but otherwise I would start with medication first for the time being, at least. I don't know, but that's my opinion. I know that like medication also doesn't agree with everybody. I had to try like three different ones before I found one that like worked. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I kind of took medication. I took like natural supplements, like I said, CBD and those were all right, but I still like, I still went after that therapy. And now for me personally, I was not into therapy for a while. Like I, I was just hated the idea of it, but then, you know, I, I took the step, I tried it. And even though the first few sessions were like, eh, well, all right. Like I wasn't all, always like giving out what I wanted to get back. Um, I kind of just went with it. I just kept pushing myself to go. Sometimes that's all you need to, is just that extra little motivation to push yourself to understand like, oh, this is all right. Like this is actually helping me. Yeah. And for people who um, maybe don't struggle as severely or don't have anything diagnosed, I would say that for me, like I felt my mental health was like kind of going down the tubes. And then I realized like, oh, I'm not like creating anything. All I'm doing is like sitting here consuming, consuming, consuming all this content. Like I need to start writing and reading and like doing what I can, going to my little private section of the beach where there's nobody. And like, I don't know, just like looking at nature, things like that. Like just take a step outside of your phone maybe and just like start creating and doing things that way. Yeah, that's true. Any sort of creative outlet right now is essential. TikTok. TikTok, I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm, working on, I'm working on it. I'm trying to go viral on there, I, admittedly. I mean, it's not the smartest thing, but um, all said and done, you know, Thank you, Mason and Alyssa. Thank you for coming on and talking to us. Hopefully we see you again sometime in an actual studio setting, not my, uh, my grandfather's room. Um, <laughs> It'd be nice to finally see it. A person? Oh, the suit. Oh, the suit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, a person <laughs> too. His grandfather? <laughs> I was confused what you were saying there for a second. But all right, um, Annabelle, thank you again for always for coming on. And 20-somethings, make sure to subscribe. Like and follow every platform. Um, yeah, bye. <laughs>